Uh, if you were concerned a child was developing a classical type 1 diabetes, what would be the signs of that? The signs are rather typical, classical. It's a, a, a triad, three Ps, and one is polydipsia, that means increased drinking. Uh, polyuria, increased urination, and polyphagia, increased uh, appetite, increased food intake. Uh, that's how I would say maybe majority of uh, children are diagnosed, maybe not uh, by a doctor, maybe by the parents who notice that suddenly the child goes to the bathroom quite often, is drinking all the time, they might dismiss it, it might be hot weather, maybe it's a habit, maybe everybody else in the family is drinking all the time. But I think at that point when you have a healthy child who suddenly starts to drink much more than previously and is going to the bathroom, especially at night, that person should be tested for diabetes. And you certainly would like to do blood sugar level, but even if you check the urine for glucose, that will give you a hint. What blood sugar level fasting what you could diagnose a diabetic? Well, that's a, we have new classification nowadays. Uh, now fasting blood glucose, and that applies to periodic age group, should be less than 100 milligram per cent. Less than 100. And if blood sugar is over 126, 126 milligram per cent, that would be called diabetes. Then you have a blood sugar between 100 and 126 talking about fasting blood glucose, that's uh, called impaired glucose tolerance. In the past we would call it chemical diabetes, that term is not used anymore. So fasting glucose after good overnight fast should be less than 100, and if it's between 100 and 126, it's abnormal, needs more investigation. If it's more than 126, that's uh, diabetic range. Then it's not enough to have one blood sugar, you need also what happens to your blood glucose when you eat, and that's called postprandial. Usually we do it like two hours. You might do like a glucose load, like a glucose tolerance test, or at least good carbohydrate meal, and it should be less than 140. So normal blood sugar fasting should be less than 100, and two hours after meal should be less than 140. Once a kid is diagnosed correctly with this, uh, do they ever go to a period where they may not even need insulin for certain? That's correct. They go. It's called honeymoon. Pe honeymoon for but it's a honeymoon period. Uh, this honeymoon will not last forever, or uh, partial remission. I would say maybe half of people who are diagnosed with type one diabetes they go to some sort of honeymoon period. Whether they can be taken off insulin completely, that certainly happens, but it's very very rare. And also depends uh, how severely diabetic are you when you are diagnosed. People who are who are, have very high blood glucose levels and they go what we call diabetic ketoacidosis, they probably have uh, re, uh, diminished insulin secretion to the point that they will not go to honeymoon period. But people who are picked up accidentally, preschool, physical, and uh, urine is checked, shows sugar in the urine, blood sugar is a little elevated, they are put on insulin, they often can go to a very, very good honeymoon period. And it can last uh, anywhere from a couple of months to a couple of years. By definition, honeymoon period is not necessarily that you stop insulin, but if the insulin requirement few weeks after the diagnosis drops by 50 percent, that's called honeymoon. And the question always was how you can prolong this honeymoon, what can you do in all kind of uh, studies, but uh, most patients, I, we have not seen and we see I would say at least 40, 50, maybe 80, probably more than 80, maybe 100 plus newly diagnosed type 1 diabetics in our clinic at Schneider Children's Hospital a year and uh, I don't recall one who we could be able to take off insulin completely.